welcome to another pour and sip live tasting um it's part two of our october box which is incredibly exciting Ooh. i don't know if people have got any drums left but we'll see <laughs> um so my name is christiana i'm the editor at master Malt, and i'm joined again by andrew london whiskey guy nice to see you all again yes and we have got two incredible drums to taste tonight both quite high abv so we're going to have a little chat about um kind of how to taste high abv whiskies as well um, but first, I thought I'd give you a super quick rundown if you're new to Pour and Sip. Um, so we are a whiskey subscription club. We are obsessed with whiskey. We love flavour. We love exciting distilleries. We love new things like newness, innovations. But we also love some of our old favourites as well. And it's all about sharing these with you. Um, whatever platform you're watching on, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube or Twitter, um, get involved. We want to hear from you. Um, send some comments. Um, Use the hashtag reply directly. Um, we've got a whole team here, like literally ready to field your questions to us. Um, and yeah, this is a conversation. This is about community. So October's box, if you have got some drums left in front of you. Um, You've shown inc incredible kind of patience and kind of with, with strength, let's say. Yeah, restraint, resolve, all of the above. So in your box, if you've got it, you'll have some tasting note cards. These are super fun for this evening, right? Because mm -hmm. it's got loads of info on one side. Um, which kind of like tell, but on the back you've got space for your own tasting notes and your own thoughts. So get involved with that. Awesome. Um, you'll also have a how to taste whiskey guide in your box. So um, please feel free to refer to that. Um, basically, don't rush, take small sips, particularly this evening because we've got two high ABV monsters. They're delicious monsters though. Um, and yeah, if you're brand new, your wel you're welcome pack is this and you'll have glasses in the bottom of it. So you can use those to taste along too. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah. first, topic of conversation mm -hmm. is adding water to whiskey yes this is a uh, kind of important because like today we're trying one which is at 50 percent abv and this lafroig is at 60.1 so that is pretty powerful stuff now i think one of the interesting things about cast strength whiskey is it's as close as you're going to get to trying the whiskey from the source from the cast like being at the distillery and basically we've got the job that we can play the kind of the role of master blender so we've got the chance to kind of add water to it kind of find our level where we you know where we think the whiskey sits perfectly everybody's palates are different so personally i <laughs> like i mean i i've been drinking lots and lots of cast strength whiskey and um i can you know some i like to add less water nowadays and sometimes even no water but i'm um, it's really up to you guys so we are we now have the role the distillery aren't doing that for us they're not adding water um after the maturation process so we can play master blender so we can kind of choose how much water we're going to add yeah, it's super fun as well. And I guess this goes back to the whole thing of like, people are like, should I add water to my whiskey? Should I add ice to my whiskey? You know what, it's up to you. Um, I think for these ones, even though they're higher ABV, if you can, taste them neat first, and then we'll add a splash of water kind of to your taste. And it really does transform. Yeah. Um, we've got little measuring jugs right here. Or bigger ones. Um, or bigger ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not showing off. No, please don't show off. <laughs> uh, because like, Obviously, it's easy to add water to whiskey, but it's really difficult to take it out. If you've got a pipette, that's super useful. I've seen people like dip their finger in a glass and pop some drops in like that before. Um, because yeah, don't drown your whiskey because that would be a heartbreaking scenario. To find that's that, you're, you're more likely to drown kind of uh, an older, kind of more delicate whiskey. Actually, fun with, particularly with this one as well. You know, I think you can add a bit more water to this one because it really is a muscular, powerful whiskey that can really hold itself with water and it's going to stand up to it. So when you're talking about something maybe lesser ABV or something a bit older, um, you should be very careful when adding water. I still would be careful with adding water, but you know we're going to open up a whole new world of flavours. But I have to say, I personally want to try it neat straight away, kind of see what the distillery wanted us to try it like straight away neat and see what it's like. And then kind of we can work out where we are, maybe add a teaspoon of pipette, whatever you're using. And then kind of you can gauge kind of where your level sits of how much water you like. Yeah, for sure. And that really echoes the point. Um, M MA supporter, I think. Never water. Doesn't that stop it being cast strength? <laughs> yeah, like that is a really good point. Of course it stops it being cast strength. But um, but that's kind of okay if you enjoy it. Not at cast strength, right? If you love it at Absolutely. cast strength, play on. Absolutely. I mean, with, with cast strength whiskey, obviously you can't call anything cast strength whiskey if you've added water, any distillery that's going to add water after the maturation process is therefore not cast strength whiskey. Um, and that's why we get these kind of batch numbers because each time it's going to vary in the level of alcohol. Um, maybe something kind of uh, which could be considered cast strength, something like the Ardberg Ugadol, which is kind of like 
I think it might be about 57%. It's still not a cast strength whiskey because they've added a bit of water to kind of get consistency in the barrels and make sure that every bottle is exactly the same. With something like Laphroaig, you're kind of going to get batch numbers. So it'll vary something like the Abalawa Buna as well, another one which you get batch numbers every year. So I kind of agree to a point, but then I, I also think it's also what you guys want to add to it and what you guys kind of feel comfortable with. So sometimes water is really going to open up a new world of flavors and open up a whiskey, more fruity notes might come out of it, more floral notes. You know, it's really, you know, you're playing master blender, so you've got the chance to see. Yeah, for sure. And you would be super surprised um, as you proof a whiskey down, which is, I guess, the technical term if you're um, sort of blending in a room. We're in a tasting room right now, yeah. so going to play that role. Um, yeah, so when we blended whiskey to Master of Malt before, we tried things that, you know, maybe 55, 50, 46, 43. And it's actually incredible which flavour compounds shine um, at different ABV levels. And that's obviously not going to be a uniform thing. It very much depends on the spirit. But it really is fascinating. So if you do have time and some of your whiskey left, um, yeah, have a play. See what happens when you add a little bit more. I don't have one of these fancy hydrometer things, so I'm not going to give you like ABV levels exactly. But um, but yeah, no, that's really cool. And I think um, yeah, just just don't don't be afraid of giving it a go, really. And also try to use bottled water. I know there are people nowadays selling actual sourced water from the regions of where the distillery is, which is yeah. definitely a cool thing. It might be for some people a bit kind of scientific and a bit unnecessary, but. Um, it is definitely better to add bottled water than it is to add tap, uh, tap water, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it depends where you live, right? Like, um, <laughs> some tap water is better than others. Not in London, okay, I'm talking because I'm from London, so <laughs> do not add tap water from London to your whiskey. Yeah, um, but yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, it's a really interesting debate, and it's one that's quite fun to have, but ultimately, it's your whiskey. Enjoy it how you want to enjoy Absolutely. it. Um, so yeah, enough talk about whiskey. I feel like we should taste some. So this evening, yep. Um, so last time we did these three in the middle, we did Glen Alky, we did Starbridge from Australia, and we tasted through the one, um, the orange cask finish whiskey. Tonight I'm going to chat us through Whistle Pig, which is really exciting, um, a rye whiskey with all kinds of stories behind it. And then Andy's going to take us through Lefroy. And you've been to Whistle Pig, haven't you? I have. Oh my gosh. Okay. I will try and keep this brief and <laughs> not too humble braggy, but yeah, it was one of my last trips this year before the world changed. Um, in February, I got to go and visit Whistle Pig, which was just incredible. Like, I don't know um, if you guys have tasted it before or know a lot about it, um, but it was a distillery that really fascinated me for a whole number of reasons. So um, it's in super rural Vermont, first of all. Um, I just come from New York City, which is obviously big, brash, lights everywhere, cars, chaos. Um, and then you get like an hour and 15 flight up to Vermont and then drive out of Burlington, which is that tiny little city, really. Um, and you're in the middle of nowhere and there was snow on the ground and it was absolutely stunning. Um, and yeah, the Whistle Pig Distillery is on the farm because they've got these aspirations to be a grain to glass bottler. So right now, a lot of their whiskey, by no means all of it anymore, but a lot of it, and definitely everything in this 10 year old expression, um, is sourced from Canada. They say that they like rescued this whiskey from being misused. What that means is it was whis uh, whiskey that was being like, destined for blending, like a lot of whiskey. In fact, most of the whiskey um, coming out of Scotland and, and indeed a lot from America is produced to be blended like the blended market makes up a huge proportion of um, the global whiskey industry um so they bought this whiskey because it's really good rye whiskey um rye whiskey has got such a different character to single malt which we'll get onto in a minute but um but yeah so they bought it they bought it over the border into vermont they kind of blended it themselves um they i mean it's already 10 years old so didn't have to do too much more to it on the aging side for this particular one but now it's such an innovative team there um they, there's, I think it's Emily and Megan. So Emily's the distiller and Megan's the blender. Um, and yep, women making whiskey, love it. Um, but yeah, it's just super innovative. They will experiment with all kinds of cask finishes. They're doing quite a lot along the lines of like fermentation. And um, they're even doing some like koji fermentation experiments when you were there, which is like a type of like mold that you'd grow on your grain. So I'm not a chemist, but I was just fascinated <laughs> by it. Um, and yeah, it just makes for some just incredible whiskey, really. I love their approach. I love how innovative they are. And it's I kind of it's a bit strange starting a tasting with a 50% ABV <laughs> rye because it's going to be pretty flavorful. But, but we um, cannot start with the Lefroy, so that's the reason why. I mean, so. you will not taste anything after the Lefroy. So yeah, <laughs> if you've already had a taste of it, let us know what you think. Um, for me, this is just really, um, it's just fruity. It's spicy. Something that I really love on the nose with a lot of rye whiskey is this kind of menthol vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like a really fresh mintness mm -hmm. in this one. Um, I don't know. I'm getting um sort of a lot of orange as well and sweet spices. I think it's it's really rich and it's got so much depth to it. Um, what, what I tend to find with black uh, with rye whiskey is you get a lot of black pepper and kind of allspice and yeah. a bit of black licorice as well. 
that yep. you get on the on the nose with rye whiskey. I actually totally agree with you about the the licorice thing. Like mm -hmm. there's something just rich and dark and a yep. bit old school totally. sweet shop going on, Absolutely. which is yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. So please let us know what your tasting notes are. Let us know your comments. Let us know your thoughts. Um, we've had some more thoughts come on about adding whiskey, um, whiskey, adding water to your whiskey, which we'll come on to in a minute. But you yes. can add whiskey to your water if you want. <laughs> it's up to you guys. For sure. I mean, they were kind of getting into like highball territory, right? Yeah, there's high, so yeah well, highballs are getting popular as well now. <laughs> but actually, talking of cocktails, I think this instantly rye whiskey tends to really suit kind of short cocktails. So things like Manhattan's, old fashioned, Sazerac's, that kind of spicy note that you get in rye whiskey really kind of suits those type of cocktails. So I would for sure be adding something like this whistle pig rye to one of those cocktails. You guys might try rye whiskey in other cocktails that you've made. You can let us know in the comments, but I definitely think this is a great kind of whiskey to use for cocktails. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just nosing this now and it's making me think of like old fashions in like mm -hmm. warehouses because mm -hmm. there's, there's quite a lot of oak coming through on this for me. Yes, you can definitely taste a bit of that kind of age and the wood kind of. Um, yep, yeah, vanilla, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely vanilla on the palate. Um, and like you said, there's kind of candied orange kind of notes mm. I'm, I'm getting with this. Definitely. Like on the finish, I'm getting quite a lot of caramel, mm. which I wasn't really expecting. So on the nose, I was thinking like this is actually pretty lively. And I feel like a lot of times with rye, you get a real spikiness to it, which mm -hmm. is kind of there in a good way. But it's also got this creamy caramel, which I think balances it out really nicely. It's really well balanced. Actually, you, you, you're totally right. That's It's it kind of instantly the first thing you'll notice is that kind of spice, the all spice, the rye spice. Yeah. Um, it is 100% rye, unless I'm mistaken. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. So you can really you can really smell that, but then there is these wonderful kind of creamier kind of butterscotchy kind of caramel vanillary notes kind of underneath it that balance it out and edge out that kind of spicier element to the whiskey. Yeah, and one of the things that really excites me about Whistle Pig is this whole like grain to glass philosophy. So this is like one of their classic core expressions, but what they're doing now, um, particularly with expressions like Boss Hog, they'll have um, those expressions are now predominantly like over fifty percent their own liquid that's come through, mm -hmm. um, and it's just incredible to see how that distillery is developed and how the team's developed and I think at some point their aspiration is to use um, grain that they've grown on their land mm -hmm. they're going to distill it there um, with that I think their own proprietary yeast and that kind of side of things and then they're going to mature it in um, their own Vermont oak so they've got forests as well it's super remote in the middle of nowhere which is just in terms of sense of place I think it's really incredible we actually wrote about it um, on the pour and sip blog this month so go and check out the kind of the community pages and you'll find like a little postcard from Vermont there um, I think maybe one day we might get a 10 year old whistle pig rye whiskey with completely whistle pig kind of from their own farm distilled from in Vermont. Yeah, that um, would be super cool. Which would be awesome. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I really like this. I think it's really, really beautiful whiskey. I think it's one of the better rye whiskeys at the kind of price point um, that there are. It reminds me a bit like High West, maybe the double rye. Um, but um, yeah, it's really nice. Mm. I'm really enjoying this one. Um, We've got um, Kai from Facebook has said dill. That's such an interesting mm -hmm. tasting note. Do you know what? I kind mm -hmm. of get that totally. with the savoury edge. Um, so there's a real savoury note to this and it's, it, there are some herb, kind of herbaceous kind of notes in there. So dill is, yeah, I can definitely say dill. Great shout. Um, NMA Sport and Massive Caramel, Jeff Brown, who's tuned in on YouTube. Thanks for watching mm -hmm. us. Um, an interesting nose to start with. Not a long finish for me, but very spicy. Yeah, for sure. There's like sweet spices. It's a spicy thing, but also it's like, for me, it's like black pepper and licorice. And to be honest with you, I, I, I see them like a cop out saying that, but it's often what I get with rye spicy, rye whiskey in general. Yeah, amazing. Um, and Nigel on Facebook is getting the mintiness as well, which is really cool. Yep, definitely. There's a cooling kind of minty element to it, almost possibly eucalyptus in there as well. Yeah, it's amazing. And that for me is like such a great indicator of rye. Mm -hmm. Is this yeah. like kind of almost like cooling, like mm -hmm. minty sensation. Yeah. It's just so different to bourbon as well. And that's kind of the interesting thing when you get into kind of American whiskies. It's just so different. And rye whiskey, I can just smell it like instantly yeah. when I poured it. You know, it's, just, it's rye whiskey. Um, and rye kind of gets a bad rep, but there are kind of people like Whistlepig and High West, I think, who are doing really awesome things with rye whiskey. And really kind of, this is for me one of the, definitely the high-end kind of rye whiskies mm. that are on the market yeah tom um he's watching on instagram has said omg love this getting a bottle <laughs> um which is a good little segue because yes. if you're a subscriber um check out the pour and sip shop because we've got discounts on like every bottle that's in the packs um this month and the month before and um, we've actually got 21 percent off rp of the whistle pig that so is ridiculous go check it out. Yeah. i'm sorry that is <laughs> i am getting a bottle that is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous yeah, it's so good. Um, and yeah, I mean, at that price, definitely get experimenting with cocktails because what's to lose? Yeah, Sazerac. I, definitely a Sazerac and a Manhattan for me in this. Yeah, it's awesome. 
Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, it, I'm kind of like nostalgic with this song because it really makes me think of like my last big trip before the world oh. kind of ended. But, you didn't um, mention it. Didn't no. mention it, I know. <laughs> go and check out the Not board, jealous at all. all. Um, yeah, and, and it's just the thing, like as soon as I think we can go and visit distilleries again, that's yeah. going to be like the first thing I do. I'm like, get me out into the world, go and see these distillers, go and taste all this stuff. Where are you going first? Oh, I want to go to Japan. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch out, Japanese distillers. I'm coming yeah, to you as coming. soon as I'm allowed out. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so that's Whistle Pig. I'm um, super delicious. I haven't actually added water yet. I'm going to put a splash okay. in now. Um, I've been too busy talking and, and not enough time tasting. But while I'm enjoying this with some water, which mm -hmm. I think will transform it, mm -hmm. keep your comments coming yeah. in. It's always wonderful to hear your tasting notes. But um, but yeah, I think we're going to have a little chat about the Freud now, which is another place that I love. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> I have to say, when I first got this box, I was super excited because I saw there on the uh, the kind of the drams that were on offer, the Lafroy 10 Car Strength. The Lafroy 10 Car Strength is without doubt my favorite peated whiskey. It might even be my favorite whiskey. And I've always kind of on my Instagram page said with other peated drams that it's not the Lafroy 10 Car Strength. I'm just gonna pour it actually, just to give it a kind of mm. bit of time before I kind of start yapping on it, everybody. Um, so. Obviously, for those that you, those of you who will know, Laphroaig is an Isla whiskey. So, in Isla, we obviously get huge peated whiskies. So, Laphroaig is part of maybe the big three. I would call them the three big hitters. You get Laphroaig, Ardbeg, and Lagavulin. Each one of them have their own kind of unique tastes, and I find Laphroaig um, has this kind of brine, iodine, medicinal kind of notes, which are from the fact that, firstly, they malt their own. They've got their own malting floor, which is one of the only distilleries left that actually still malt their own barley like that at the distillery. Maybe 20% of the barley is malted at Lafroy. Um, they are right by the ocean. So those waves come crashing open. They open the windows in the malting room, in the Dunnage warehouse, and all these kind of sea spray notes, the sea air are coming through into this. So you can really taste that iodine kind of brine kind of notes. Um, another interesting thing about Lafroig is actually back in the Prohibition era, I think this is super interesting, in 1920, Lafroig was actually not being sold in liquor stores, obviously, because it was banned, but it was being sold as medicine, um, basically because of its high iodine content. So people thought they could treat ailments like thyroid disease and all of these kind of things with Lafroig. And then back in the UK, even in the early 1900s, it was considered so unpalatable that it wasn't even being sold in liquor stores. It was being sold at pharmacies, is which is absolutely ridiculous. But you can kind of see why. So they weren't taking paracetamol back in that, those days. They were having a dram of Lafroig. Maybe it was better back in those days. Anyway, so you may have been aware of the Lafroig 10, the normal Lafroig 10, which comes in at 40% ABV. Um, you would be able to find that bottle in pretty much any supermarket. It is pretty much the standard Lafroig. It's available everywhere, it's in back bars everywhere, and it's a super cheap bottle. I think it, you can get it for about 30 odd quid. And it's a wonderful peated whiskey, it really is. It's one of the best kind of standard ranges. You've got the Ardbeg 10 and you've got the Lafroig 10, and both of those people have arguments which one they prefer. You can let me know in the comments if you're a Lafroig or Ardbeg, because that's an argument that goes, um, kind of continues on Instagram and uh, further on. Um, but the Lafroig 10 is normal. This. Lafroig 10 is the car strength Lafroig. And if you've seen Spinal Tap, that's like the normal Lafroig has been turned up to 11. It's like that amp has been switched up to 11. So this is trying Lafroig pretty much from its source. They only barrier filter this, so there's no water added at all after the maturation process. Barrier filtering kind of takes out those kind of large elements of char and charcoal that are left from the barrel. Um, so this is kind of the closest you're gonna get to experiencing going to Lafroig whacking open a cask and trying it. Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, for me, this is a classic cold winter's night dram when you're wet and it's been wet outside, you come home, you sit on the sofa and this one, this is really gonna warm you up. Um, it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite distilleries um, and I think this is their best expression for me um, because it's, it's, just, it's just a peat monster. I think when we talk about peat, um, usually you see uh, what's called PPM, which is called um, peat parts per million. And Lafroig malt their barley at about 45, whereas Ardbeg at about 55, Lagavulin at 37. Um, so it doesn't come in, for those of you who like peat monsters, at the kind of Octomore levels of like 167 PPM. But funnily enough, this for me, whenever want, someone wants to try a peat monster, this is the one. This is the one that I say, if you try this, this is the peatiest whiskey and it's probably my favourite peated whiskey. So I'm super excited to try this. Um, I hope it doesn't disappoint. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it can. Um, yeah, what I really love about this one, um, just coming back to it, I've tried it before a few times, like different batches, is how much it just celebrates that distillery character. Mm -hmm. 
for this one it's literally all about the process right so it's all about celebrating the grain there's a good mm -hmm. good amount of grain you can still get on the nose um yeah. and it's about that those peat levels um mm -hmm. those yeah the phenol parts per million that flavor compound in there um and it's just celebrating like what the frog does best there's no finishing here there's no. none of this like messing about with cast maturation which we, as we <laughs> celebrated last time can be a great thing about 90 percent of what lafroy do in all of their expressions is matured in ex-bourbon barrels from maker's mark distillery actually they've got a relationship with maker's mark maker's mark need to use their barrels only once as we discussed last week and they send them over to lafroy um, they talk about the consistency of those maker's mark barrels and that's the reason why lafroy like kinds of dealing with Maker's Mark. So pretty much most of the Lafroy range is matured in ex-bourbon barrels. Like you said, they don't really often kind of experiment unless it comes to the festival editions where they've experimented yeah. with port and other kind of stuff, but it's not normal for Lafroy. No, um, and some people are absolutely loving this. Um, David Woodcock from Facebook, he says he was at Lafroy exactly a year ago. I mean, jealous. Jealous. Um, <laughs> and he was staying at the hotel next door, happy memories. Um, and if you go to Isla actually and stay in Port Ellen, which is, one of the i say a bigger town it's not really a town it's a village but um those three distilleries the big three peter that you mentioned um lagavulin and the frog and ardbeg they're all within like five kilometer walk Absolutely. and there's this amazing path along the bottom of the island with incredible views so if you do go to isla you have to stay in port ellen and walk along to the distilleries because you can really easily do it like in an afternoon um and it's wonderful like these as, three uh, to each other. as prince charles did because you'll see here it's actually the frog has a royal warrant because prince charles in 1994 uh, it's his favourite dram, and he uh, went to Lefroy to issue Lefroy with the royal warrant and actually crashed his aeroplane into the peat bogs. This is a true story. It's just for anyone who might want to know. That is actually true. I think there is in like a photograph of it yes, at the distillery or something. Yeah, okay, so, but yeah, if it's good enough for, Peach, uh, for Prince Charles, Pete's Charles, Pete no, it's Charles? Prince, Prince Charles. Who <laughs> it's good enough. Uh, look, on the nose, this is just, it's, you know, the longer you let this sit, obviously you're going to open this up, you're going to smell it, and you're going to, that smells like peat. But it's what type of peat is it? For me, this is a much more kind of medicinal, briny, iodine peat. Um, I get always with Lefroy, and people always say to me, that is not a nice flavor note, but I always say antiseptic, hospital floor kinds of thing. Um, for me, <laughs> I think that is a nice note, and it kind of makes Lefroy what it is. Uh, you guys might think it's different, but it's not quite as maybe ashy as the Lagavulin peat, for me, personally. And you guys might, might think the same, I don't know. Yeah, it's really interesting. But for me, Lafroy isn't actually all about the smoke. I still get loads of that body character. That's what I was sorry, the longer it's in the glass, the more other stuff is really starting to show underneath that it is, it is powerful and it is pungent. But underneath, you are starting to get fruitier notes as yep. well. The distillery character is really coming through. I'm actually getting quite a lot of apple, like orchard mm, fruits, yeah, pears. Absolutely. Um, Green apple, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it feels quite crisp to me today. recommend this as like a I, I think if you don't like peat uh this might be very powerful for you i don't know what your powers are, but um if you do like peat this might be the one that kind of makes you go wow i i really like peat and i'm really gonna go because this this is this is the one for me i'll also tell you a quick story if you think you don't like whiskey don't necessarily avoid the difficult dram. So one of my friends, um, Claire, if you are watching, uh, she was like, I don't like whiskey. I've never found a whiskey that I liked. And it's been like my life's work to persuade her that she likes whiskey. So I'm like, no, whiskey is so flavorful. The spectrum is incredible. There's so much going on. Um, and I just kind of almost as a joke gave her some Lafroy to try. And it wasn't the car strength, it was the, the core 10 year old. And she was like, I didn't think whiskey could be like this. I actually really like it. She really liked that kind of vibe. She likes more savoury food anyway. So I think because it is so out there, maybe. You can um, surprise yourself. I mean, Lefroy yeah. are now advertising it as like, they're literally saying, what are notes are you getting? Smoked fish, all of these kind of things as a, as a kind of like, because people often smell it and they go, oh God, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> and Lefroy are kind of using that as kind of a marketing point now of basically going, actually just another thing, if you do buy this from us, which is actually, I'll just let me check, it's like 69 pounds off and you get 10% off of this bottle. But you actually, if you buy a bottle, you can own a part of the land on, at Lefroy. So you'll get your own square foot 
and one day you can visit that and you can go and put a flag in that square foot, which is something I'd love to do, actually. Yeah, and it's fun. something that Nigel on YouTube, uh, no, sorry, Nicholas on YouTube just said that it's gone and done. He said oh, two man. square feet. Does that mean two. you have been twice? I don't know. Two bottles. Know. I don't know. Two if you bottles? buy two bottles and um, get two square foot, you can... <laughs> and it's so much fun because if you go and revisit, you get you get your rent, which mm -hmm. is a dram of whiskey. Yes. I think that's fair payment for yep, a Yeah, that is definitely fair payment. That's the kind of payment I can get on board with. Yeah, I'm going to have a taste now because I can't resist any longer. Are we both neat at the moment? I'm neat. I haven't yeah. added any water yet. Um, but I will add a splash in a second. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's always fun. Even at 60%, um, mm. 60.1, I think this is, it's good to taste it neat. Oh, yeah. It's so drying on the mouth and the mouthfeel is just absolutely wonderful. And geez, that peat is... It is mm. pungent. It's herbaceous as well. There's kind of these kind of savoury herb notes coming through. Oh, it's gorgeous. It, it really is. I think for, for me, this is very special whiskey. And um, it's just, yeah, it's a muscular whiskey, this one. This is a really yeah. muscular whiskey. It's big and bold and strong. And today, I don't know if this is just my nose. Please let me know what you're getting. There's almost like a really dark coffee vibe mm, coming through on absolutely. the finish. Absolutely. Like like Bitter all coffee the way as well. Bitter coffee. That. And yeah. that finish, the finish goes on and on and on. Yep. And it's lingering in my mouth. The kind of There are some black pepper notes lingering on. Peat, actually, as I mentioned, there's an ashier peat kind of lingering in my mouth now. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, that finish is long. It's gorgeous. And I feel like I can hold it in my mouth for ages too mm -hmm. because there's so much going on. And actually, I think texturally it is hot because it's you know 60 percent, but it's not uncomfortable no. it's not like oh my word this is burning yeah, it, it's more of a like a i don't know um the the, the the warmth is like more of a prickle and it's more something you feel rather than like the heat of it and you're like what i think it's yeah, yeah so, and honestly on the nose now like if you said to me that was 60 percent abv i'd be like is it it's yeah. it's it just doesn't kick through that much whereas it may, i don't know if it's the the bat because batch 11 i found was just super but actually the abv was less so it's actually really interesting i don't know if that's maybe a today thing in this in this room but it's like it really does not kind of nose like a 60 uh, percent yeah. whiskey could be a today thing could just be that we've drunk a lot of car strength whiskey in our time and we're yes. immune to it <laughs> that, now that could so also be true let us know that's the, the tiniest issue. drop of water yeah i'm gonna add the teeniest drop again let us know if you're adding water how much you're adding like how it's changing mm -hmm. the whiskey for you because we didn't really cover this on the whistle pig but mm -hmm. um the flavor will be transformed yep. even by a couple of drops like it's it kind of blows my mind really how much um extra flavor you get out and ultimately it's because you're you're taking the ratio of the alcohol down so your nose and your the human sensory system is able to pick up more of these other flavor compounds which is fantastic the so master blenders will often with whiskey they will be adding water to kind of see where the levels sit where they're getting those flavor compounds and which ones the best ones are so we are really all playing master blender here and that's like i said before what is the interesting thing about cast strength whiskey is we're not being dictated what it should be drunk at you're dictating what it should be drunk at and i think that's why the kind of the 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 kind of desire to buy car strength whiskey is rising at the moment and there are just more and more car strength whiskies coming out mm. i think with car strength as well oh it's just incredible with water i'm getting like slightly chocolatey vibes now loving it um but yeah with single cask once it's gone it's gone right so once everything from that cask mm -hmm. has or you know a small batch once it's gone you're never going to get the same whiskey like that again and just Absolutely. to stress i don't think this is single cask i think it's car strength i think it's like a a, a, a small batch vatting but um but yeah if you do get your hands on something like that you might only have one of 200 bottles in the world so it's so, incredibly special but if, if you are talking about even if it's it, this is a, a bigger batch than just one cask but every batch is going to be different yeah. so you, that's the other interesting if you do like a bottle like this which i do i i love looking and i look forward to the next edition and seeing what the next edition is and you can compare it i i will compare this with the 11 that i have at home um, often people say that the seven was the best. So it's, it's really interesting to see the online forums, which Lefroy car strength is the best. This is the same with the Abelau Abuna. Um, and very, you know, especially talking in America, that, that's actually a really popular thing. I've got the, like the Elijah Craig barrel proof, the Stag Junior barrel proof. There's just so many and each different batch is so different to the last one. So it's really interesting to compare and make those comparisons between them all. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, please do keep your thoughts yes. coming in, your comments. So Steve Cooper, who's on YouTube, says they really enjoy Peter's whiskey. That is so good. I agree. <laughs> I think it really is. It's really, really wonderful. Um, and somebody else has said this is one of the few car strengths that they like without water, which yeah. is really interesting because yeah. it's... I, I, I get that. I totally get that. Yeah, no, I totally get that. But actually, fun enough, with the water has really just brought out some more herby notes for me. And then mm. some the, the kind of the peat is kind of becoming a bit ashier with water yeah i agree for me it's um getting grassier and a bit mm -hmm. fresher i feel like yep. before it was like maybe there was a bit of like 
you know, dry cigar, dry tobacco, that dry kind tobacco, of thing. Yeah. Whereas now it's it's like those leaves have come back to life. Yes, like, <laughs> absolutely. You know, straight after there's been a big downpour of rain and the plants <laughs> yeah. are revived, that kind of a sensation. Um, now, see, a really, really interesting thing actually about putting water into your whiskey is that it's like before a rain, huge rainfall, you don't smell as much, but once the rains come down, you re your, your nose starts to pick up new kind of smells and this, everything smells much fresher and newer. And it's kind of the same thing with whiskey is that once you put water into it, you can really kind of open up new flavors. Your nose becomes more tuned to those different flavors. Mm. And I think it's quite an interesting comparison. Yeah, 100%. I love, I just love what, you know, the magic of water can do to these flavor compounds. Like it's absolutely, absolutely. unreal. Yeah. Um, and you'll find that with pretty much any whiskey you taste, like there's nothing wrong with adding water even to 40% ABV whiskey, no. if that's how you like it. We've talked about it this evening in the context of these much higher ABV whiskeys. Like it's very unusual to get stuff in the 60% mark. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's your whiskey, you do you. You yeah. do whatever you want. And let, let us know. I mean, please <laughs> let us know what you, where you found that kind of level, how much water you have added to this. If you didn't need water, because as someone just mentioned previously, they felt it's better without water. Yep. That's totally fine. I can totally get on board with that. It's different. I think it's, it's definitely a different dram now I've added water. Yeah, definitely. Um, so a few more comments. Keep me coming. We've got like a few minutes left. Um, Jonathan Williams on YouTube. I'm yet to fully join the PT party, but that the Freud is bloody good. So that's exactly. going against what I was saying. So good for you, like because I, I was like, this isn't going to win you over. So I'm really happy if people are being won over by this one because it's, it's such a big monster. I feel like if you like this, you are just going to like all PT whiskey because this is so big. It's such a big amount. Yeah, I worry that some of it's a bit dark. side by side mm. because you'll just feel that it's the Lafroy 10 the standard core Lafroy 10 is a wonderful whiskey that's for certain but next to this it just like I said this has turned up to 11. Mm. I'm just looking at some more comments like NMA supporter again from Instagram brilliant thanks booked on to Isla next July again jealous yeah absolutely <laughs> experiences and both to be enjoyed and savoured I think in different ways um, and then somebody else I'm gonna have a lot of fun exploring this one having already ordered and received a bottle fantastic yeah, that's what you're ahead of the say. game yeah, that was Peter game. on YouTube so yeah I'm, I'm very impressed by your proactivity I, I'm very pleased with the positivity towards this because I was expecting yeah. lots of people to run again oh my god I can't <laughs> it's just that's just horrible yeah, it's too much it's too just much. too much no. that's really awesome that everyone's really digging this I really really that's awesome yeah, definitely. I want to know, of the two of them, you've got to pick one. This is like the hard bit now, like which of these two did you enjoy the most? We had quite a split sort of views last, last time. There was somebody who liked each of them. So that's not what you think, whether you're coming down more on like the spicy menthol, rye, warmth and complexity, or whether you're more uh, Peter single malt, big, brash Lefroy. What are you saying? That's so difficult. Yeah, I seriously. actually don't know. Um, I feel like they're both incredibly different and they both are a real celebration of that just kind of raw me. material character, I'm going to say. Totally. So um, rye is such, I don't know, it's such a distinct grain for me. Um, and it can be so difficult for distillers to work with because it's sticky, it's hard, like it's difficult to kind of manipulate and get these flavours going. Um, but I think Whistlepig is so beautifully balanced. I really, really love it. Having said that, like, PT whiskey has my heart. So mm -hmm. I just don't think I could choose. That's like yeah. choosing between children. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, just, I, I liked both drinks, but for me, the, that, that Lafroy 10 cast strength is just, it's just a beautiful jam. And every time I taste it, every batch is really good. And I've never been disappointed by a batch um, of Lafroy 10 cast strength. So, and this one doesn't disappoint either. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the Lafroy. But that's not because I don't like the whistle pick. It's just because I really have, holds a place <laughs> in my heart. Um, we've got some votes coming in. Keep those coming in. Um, Jeff on YouTube has said, well, he said two things actually. Um, nine distilleries on Ireland now worth a visit. Yep, 100%. And then come down on the side of the Lafroy for him. Mm -hmm. Katie on Facebook is saying Whistle Pig. David on Facebook is saying Lafroy by a mile. Yes, um, David. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you're Team Lafroy. Like, uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> Team Lafroy. Yeah. <laughs> um, Someone else has said that the Freud isn't for them, that they're afraid, which is fine. That's, that's exactly, and that's what you expect when you try Freud. It is such a Marmite flavour, but Pete in general is a Marmite flavour. I know a lot of people that they, they think that all whiskey is smoky, so they just don't like whiskey and they yeah. say I don't like it, and it's not. But Pete is such a Marmite flavour that you are, it, for me, it's just not one of those drams that you're going to try and you're going to go, that was nice. You're going to either have, it's an, for me, it's, a, it's, the, it's pure theatre, it's unforgettable. 
you know, you're either gonna absolutely love it or you are really gonna kind of loathe it. And that's the really special thing about the Freud and yeah. PT whiskey. Yeah, for sure. And this is like the joy really of putting these boxes together for pour and sip, because yeah. I think looking back to the drams we had before, yeah. there's such, such a spectrum variety. of flavor yeah. here. There's such a variety. And I mean, how can you not love whiskey when you've got all of these things going this on? This just proves the, like you say, the spectrum and the breadth of kind of flavors you can get with whiskey from all over the world in this in this case we've got England, America, Scotland and Australia and such unique flavors that it's just I just don't know how anyone couldn't like whiskey personally. Yeah, I know right. Um, there's a hand for the people who are also stuck like me. Steve on YouTube I can't decide. Um, Tom on YouTube has said this is a very good Laphroaig but I think the Whistlepig wins. Mm, interesting. interesting. Um, and then Nigel has said it's impossible to choose. Both are great, might be forced to buy both. I mean, I feel like your whiskey collection is going to benefit from both. Yeah, yeah that is definitely <laughs> going to benefit from both. That is that is 100%. Yeah, and again, like this is the whole kind of point with Pour and Sip. It's about making these new discoveries and figuring out what you want to get. And yeah, hopefully we've got some chunky discounts in the member shop. So you, that makes it a bit easier as well, which is great. Yeah, totally. Yeah, um, yeah, loads of great stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. So that has been fascinating. It is fascinating. And I can't believe the time has flown. This is actually unreal. So um, the next date for your diary for these, for the November box, I don't know how we're at like, uh, November already, which will be landing with you the first week of November. So coming up really soon. I think it's the 12th, 12th of November. So tune in again. Um, we're going to do exactly the same, I think, as we've done now. We're going to do three and then two, just because you get to chat a little bit more and go a little bit more in depth, which is super fun. It's, it's definitely nicer to be able to really sit with each dram and kind of give them the time that they deserve yes. to kind of really discuss. And we can all together, and you guys sending in your tasting notes, that's really awesome because it gives us more and we can really discuss it virtually now we can't be together but uh very sad but you know we can discuss it virtually yeah definitely and i mean yeah we can't be together we can't visit these distilleries but i mean we kind of can get transported there through our tasting glasses which is Absolutely. kind of a close enough second 100 percent. amazing so yeah um we really hope you enjoy them let us know on social um jeff said any clues for the next box um i'm gonna say you're gonna have to wait and see but what i will say is i feel like for the last two boxes we've really tried to put together like a really great selection um, in terms of style and in terms of region. And that's very much a theme that's continuing, which is, yeah, really, really exciting. And I can't wait to see what you think of them. Um, yeah, uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, again, just to stress geographic variants and flavor variants. Absolutely. Um, yeah, wonderful stuff around. So yeah, um, keep in touch with us though in the interim. Like we are a whiskey community. We wanna hear your thoughts. You can be super honest, give us your feedback, tell us which drams you loved and why. That's always great. So yeah, pour and sip club with a hashtag. Um, yeah, get, get involved um, all the way through and keep your eyes peeled for November's box. Cheers everybody. Cheers. Have a great night. Thanks for joining Cheers. us.